In this video, we'll show you how to activate a security system for an XAF application. Security is very important to every multi-user application, but at the same time it can be complex to implement, as it influences so many design decisions across an application's architecture. The Express App Framework has been built from the ground up with security considerations in mind, and we supply a modular security system out of the box. And of course, this functionality works on both Windows Forms as well as ASP.NET target platforms. We're going to apply a role-based security strategy and standard authentication type to the application we created in the previous tutorials. So let's get started. The security system is supplied in a module. To configure a security system, I'll choose security and authentication strategies to be used and drag them to the security section in the application designer. XAF provides two built-in security strategies. First, the simple security strategy. This strategy assumes two user types, a user and an administrator. Users have access to any operation with all objects, except for access to the user list and user details. An administrator has access to all operations on all objects, including user information and a special right to edit the application model. Second, the complex security strategy. According to this strategy, users have roles, which in turn are characterized by a permission set. The administrator user can create other users and roles and assign one or more roles to each user at runtime. In addition to the security strategies, XAF also supplies two built-in authentication types, which can be combined with any of the security strategies. Standard authentication represents the commonly used authentication type where a user is authenticated by a name and password combination specified in a login window. There's an underlying database of users, including password information, and a user is authenticated if the username password combination he or she uses is found in that database. Although, you can customize this behavior and use custom logon parameters for user authentication. The second authentication type is Active Directory Authentication, which uses the Windows Active Directory service to obtain information on a user. If the account can be found in the directory and the corresponding user object exists in the application's database, by the way, the password is not stored in this case, the user is authenticated. Now, let me configure the security system. I drag the security strategy complex and the authentication standard items to the security section of the application designer. In the properties window, you can specify which logon parameters type you are going to use, if you have a custom one. In addition, you can specify custom security user and security role type. In this instance, the security system will be working with custom object types. Now, I'm fully satisfied with the default types. That's all, security is configured. Before running an application with a configured security system, I'll create users and roles and assign roles to users. This will allow the users to log on. The objects that should exist in the database while running the application are created in the module updater .update database after update schema method of a module updater class. First of all, we'll create roles. The following code demonstrates how to create an administrator role. An object is considered prohibited until you grant access to it. To give full access to all objects, I use the grant recursive method passing the object type as a base type and full access as a security operation type. To allow a user with the administrator role to edit the application model at runtime, the role's can edit model property is set to true. Now let's create a user role. This role has access to objects of all types except for the objects of the security user and security role types and several permission types. To exclude some types from the range of permitted types, I use the deny recursive method. The user role also has two extra permissions, an object level permission that allows reading and navigating to the security user object representing the current user, and a member level permission, which allows an access to change the change password on first logon and stored password properties of the security user class.
Now let's create users and assign roles to them. The first user will be Sam. He is an administrator. The second user is John. He is a user. All the objects we created here will be saved to the database when the application is started, if they haven't been saved yet. If I now try running the application, I'll get an error before the logon form is invoked. Here it is. The system cannot show a logon form for an unknown user, so I'll have to create an account that has access to the logon form. Each user will be considered to be anonymous unless he or she provides valid credentials. I create an anonymous role, an anonymous user. The anonymous role has a type level permission to read security user objects. The anonymous user has a single anonymous role. Now, I'm ready to run the application. In the logon window, I specify the parameters I set for Sam. I pass authentication because my user details were found in the database. Here we can see my details, user and role navigation items that are added by security. The My Details item invokes a detail view of the security user object representing the currently logged on user. Here I can see all existing roles. Let's view the user role. Here is a list of type level permissions. We can check each checkbox individually or click Grant to grant full access at once. Then we can see the member level permissions and object level permissions for each object type. For users, I can reset their password. In addition, I can affect that they change their password on the first logon. Now let's log on as John, a user. Here we can see My Details object, and access to this object is granted by the user role. Note, I can change my password by using the Change My Password built-in action. Here is the roles list view. Since access to the security role object is not granted, all the information is replaced by the protected content strings. Finally, I'll configure the security system for the ASP.NET application project to show you that XAF security systems work with both target platforms. I apply the same configuration as I did for the Windows Forms application so that the users I've already created can use the website as well. I run the ASP.NET application and there's the same security functionality as in the Windows Forms application.
To learn more about other security configurations, please refer to the XAF documentation. Thanks for watching. Let's see what develops.